Uh, this is Don Brown. I am a uh, scholar in residence, sustainability, ethics, and law at Widener University School of Law. This is part two of a very basic introduction to the ethics of climate change. Uh, part one can be seen on our website, which is ethicsandclimate.org. This slide identifies uh, many of the ethical questions entailed by the need to make climate change policy. There are different ethical issues. They raise different kinds of ethical questions. For some of these ethical questions, there appears to be pretty widespread agreement as to what ethics requires. For many others, there's reasonable disagreement as to what ethics and justice requires. However, it's not necessary to have agreement to make progress because so many positions taken by so many governments are clearly unjust and therefore spotting the injustice and the unacceptability of positions will help us move forward on the climate agenda. The first civilization challenging ethical question entailed by climate change that we will look at is generally referred to as the issue of what uh, atmospheric greenhouse gas stabilization uh, level should we, should we agree upon. Uh, this uh, decision, the amount of greenhouse gases that we tolerate in the atmosphere uh, will determine how much warming, the amount of warming will determine the amount of damage and who gets and who gets harmed. There could be no more obvious ethical question than this question, uh, but most nations ignore this issue when they debate what should be done in their country. They ignore what their duty is to stabilize greenhouse gases in the atmosphere at safe levels. The entire world must work together to try to stabilize greenhouse gases at safe levels. Uh, there are interesting scientific questions as to what level is safe. Uh, some people believe the level should be no higher than 450 parts per million carbon dioxide equivalent. Some people believe 350 parts per million. We're already uh, approaching 430 parts per million of carbon dioxide equivalent. We're running out of time. This is a civilization challenging ethical questions, yet most governments, when they adopt national policy, don't discuss what their duty is to stabilize greenhouse gases at safe levels. This Department of Energy chart, uh, once understood, demonstrates why this is such a, a civilization challenging problem. The black line of the, at the top is total energy use going up about one to two percent per year. Uh, the different uh, color sections of this chart are different kinds of energy that we're currently using. The colored line shows the total amount of energy that we need to limit uh, energy use to if we're going to stabilize at various greenhouse gas concentration levels. The light blue line, for instance, shows uh, what would be required to stabilize greenhouse gases at 450 parts per million. You can see the steepness of the curves that would be required to stabilize at safe levels. This is an urgent civilization challenging problem. Uh, th this slide also demonstrates uh, the urgency of understanding the ethical dimensions of climate change. Along the bottom axis are increases in temperature in degrees centigrade. Two degrees centigrade is in the middle of the chart. There are five boxes. The darker the red color, uh, the higher the probability uh, there is that you'll have rapid nonlinear harsh consequences. What's so amazing about this chart is that it demonstrates that above two degrees centigrade, we're running very high risks that, that the climate impacts will be harsh. Clearly, this is an element of the ethical dimensions of this problem. This chart also demonstrates why this problem is such a civilization challenging uh, problem. Uh, the, the colored lines represent different uh, energy pathways that will allow us to stabilize at different levels. The yellow line is 550 parts per million. The red line is, uh, is 450 parts per million. The steepness of the curve uh, shows the magnitude of the cuts we need. Uh, but because there's some uncertainty about what warming will take place from different levels, the red line, the numbers show that even if we could stabilize at 450 parts per million, there's a, a 45 to 85 percent chance that will exceed the very dangerous two degrees centigrade. We're running out of time. It's a civilization challenging problem. Second civilization challenging ethical question 
that climate change raises is the question of what is each nation's individual entity's fair share of total global emissions. It's obviously an ethical question. It requires one to reflect upon fairness and justice and equity, not economic interests. Yet most nations are entering climate negotiations as if only their economic interests counts. The question of fairness, which is so central, has been completely ignored in the public debate about policy. Although different respectable ethical theories which reach different conclusions about how to quantify fairness, nations have consistently entered negotiations as if only their interest counts and pushing theories that no ethical th uh, theory would condone. The United States, for instance, is pushing called something called grandfathering or that emissions should be based upon total global economic welfare. There are huge ethical, obvious ethical problems with these approaches. This slide also shows why the allocation problem must be understood as an ethical problem. The, the top part of the slide shows those countries which are mostly causing the problem. The bottom part of the slide are the countries that are most vulnerable uh, uh, to climate change. Clearly, any ethical uh, theory of allocation would make those responsible uh, to reduce their emissions more than those who have done nothing to cause the problem. This slide shows another aspect of this problem, why it's so civilization challenging, the allocation question. Different theories of distributive justice would reach different quantifications of what fairness requires. This chart represents one of the more popular positions. It assumes that every human being should have an equal right to the, use the atmosphere as a sink. But if we do this, the U.S. share would have to be reduced dramatically by over 90% if the U.S. agrees that every human being has the right to use the, the atmosphere equally around the world. This is a civilization challenging ethical question and, and, and we, we may not duck this issue. Another set of uh, ethical issues uh, that must be faced in, in climate policy making arise out of the fact that most of the arguments made against climate change policies are scientific and economic claims that appear on first glance to be factual disputes but actually hide deeply important obvious ethical questions. We need to help everybody understand the ethical issues that ar arise by scientific and economic arguments about policy alternatives. There are actually a host of ethical questions that time doesn't permit us to get into that are raised when decision makers must face uncertainty about potentially harsh consequences. 20 years ago, when the international community agreed on a climate change treaty in 1992, the entire world agreed that as a matter for climate change, it would be wrong to use uncertainty because too much was already well established. It's called the precautionary principle. Ethics would support the precautionary principle in a case like climate change because uh, the victims ha have a right to not be put at risk. If we wait till all the uncertainty is resolved, it's too late. We're already running out of time if the consensus view is correct. The precautionary principle is not ethically controversial, yet we ign ignore the ethical questions raised by scientific uncertainty. An organization called the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, which was created by the world's governments to synthesize the peer review uh, science on climate change and advise them, has articulated what is called the consensus view. The consensus view is not a consensus on all things in a position that the world is warming, that it's mostly human caused, and if rapid uh, reductions in greenhouse gas emissions are not taken, the world is headed uh, for really dangerous climate change. The claim that there is a consensus view on climate science can be substantiated by the following facts. Every academy of science in the world that has taken a position on climate science, and there are 19 of them, have issued statements in support of the consensus view. The United States Academy of Science has done this four times. Every scientific organization with relevant expertise, there's over 120 of them, ha has issued positions in support of the consensus view. 97 to 98% of the scientists that actually do climate science research, uh, contrasted with other kinds of science, support the consensus view. There is a strong consensus view on climate science. For almost 30 years in the United States and three or four other developed countries, there's been something called a climate science disinformation campaign. 
Skepticism in science is a good thing. It should be encouraged even for climate science. But dis disinformation, claims which are not supported by peer-reviewed science, are deeply ethically problematical. Um, and so there are many interesting questions about uh, what we should expect from, from climate skeptics. Climate skeptics should publish their uh, results in peer-reviewed journals uh, and not make claims that are not supported uh, by uh, peer-reviewed science, among other things. And so we have seen scientific uncertainty raises a host of ethical questions. The second most frequent argument uh, made in opposition to climate change policies, perhaps even more frequent than scientific uncertainty arguments, are claims that we should not adopt climate policies because of costs, costs to the polluter, costs to the nation, cost benefit analysis. Uh, there's a variety of different forms that these cost arguments take. These cost arguments are full of obvious ethical problems, yet the public debate almost has, for over 25 years, failed to identify these obvious ethical problems. One problem is the fact the cost of doing nothing may far exceed the cost to the polluter uh, of requiring them to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. There are other obvious ethical problems with these, these cost arguments. One of them uh, stems from the fact uh, that the persons causing the problem are, are often rich people or rich countries in parts of the world, but the victims uh, th that will, will uh, be exposed to the harms are often poor people. Cost arguments often ignore problems of distributive justice. Uh, problems of cost often ignore the fact that polluters should pay uh, for harms that they are, they are causing on people that have not consented to be harmed by their action. Uh, cost arguments usually translate all values into, into dollar values. They use a method called willingness to pay. Willingness to pay commodifies everything. Therefore, a country can decide the costs are too high by assuming that the value of life in, in uh, sub-Saharan Africa is little and therefore the cost of the polluter outweighs the value of the lives of, of people that will be killed by this. This is deeply ethically problematic. There are obvious ethical problems with cost arguments, but these have usually been ignored in the public debate about climate policy. Uh, we've now reviewed four civilization challenging ethical questions raised by climate change. There are uh, many other issues that also need to be faced, but time does not permit us in, in this introduction to, ev to other than simply mention some of these other questions. A whole series of questions about not only the duties of nation states, but the duties of individuals, subnational governments, organizations, and businesses to reduce climate change. Uh, there are lots of interesting questions about who should pay for damages uh, and when they should become responsible for damages. A similar question is who should pay for adaptation. Uh, there are interesting questions about human rights and climate change. There's a host of ethical questions entailed by climate change. Summarizing what we've done in this introduction includes the fact climate change raises dozens of civilization challenging ethical questions. The failure to identify the ethical questions has practical consequences for policy. In fact, uh, international negotiations will not achieve a, a just global solution until the world comes up with a solution that countries around the world think is just. The failure to identify the ethical questions is a barrier uh, to making progress internationally on climate change. Uh, we, therefore, there, we therefore must turn up the volume on the ethical dimensions of climate change. Uh, this very brief introduction to the ethics of climate change has tried to make the case why it's so practically important for policy making to turn up the volume on the ethical dimensions of, uh, of climate change. Uh, ethical questions arise in many different uh, policy issues that must be faced. Uh, if this is correct, we must all work together to help the press, citizens, governments, and NGOs, and particularly these, the nations that are not being responsible uh, to understand or respond to the ethical dimensions of this amazing problem.